Hi, and welcome back to Pi Simple GUI 2020, part three, your first window. This is going to be the big lesson for you. Um, we're we're going to cover all that you need to know to make a window with Pi Simple GUI and execute it, the whole thing. So of all of the, the lessons being presented here as part of the 2020 series, this is the one that will teach you pretty much everything you need. So let's get going. Two concepts here to uh, know about PySimple GUI windows, and, and those are design patterns. There are two design patterns that we will follow. Uh, one is called a one-shot window, and that is a window that's read once, and then you close it and move on. The other is a persistent window. These persist. They hang around. You interact with them, uh, and then you close them. Uh, the, the difference, the big difference, is that one-shot windows don't have event loops. The anatomy of a PySimple GUI uh, program is always five sections. Uh, the event loop we said may be missing, um, but otherwise it's always five sections. And those sections are the import statement. We've already said from coding conventions that it's usually from some PySimple GUI port as SG because uh, from that point on, you your code can be coming from Qt or it can be WX Python or web. It doesn't matter. It's uh, SG text um, it will be a text element and it's the import that changes where you get it from. In theory, changing the import is all that's required to move from one port to another. In practice, it's a little more subtle than that, but th that's the, the idea. I don't think we've talked about the ports. Uh, there are four of them at the moment. Uh, PySimple GUI is the Tikinter port. It is what I would call complete. Uh, it's, it has all the features. Uh, new features that are being added are enhancements. Um, PySimple GUI Qt is the PySide 2 port. It used to support PyQt 5 as well, but no longer supports that PySide 2 only. It is almost feature complete. One of the main features it implements is the system tray. Uh, that's true also for PySimple GUI WX, the WX Python port. And then there's web, which is the Remy port. The, the last two, Remy and WX Python, are the least far along. I would say WX Python is the absolute least. It was done mostly to get the system tray support. Um, you can get that from Qt as well. And there is even a, a Tikinter version that we will talk about later. Um, never, ever, 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 ever do from PySimple GUI import star. You see this with Tikinter programs someone long ago made a tutorial where they did that and now it's propagated everywhere. It uh, immediately exposes you as a beginner. There are so many problems with uh, doing this. Um, it will automatically delete your Pi file if you do that with PySimple GUI when it detects it. So, so don't do it. That's a joke. It will not delete your file. But, but, but I won't answer your question if you've posted code that shows import star. You've been warned. Just don't do it. The layout. This is where the magic is with PySimple GUI. Um, so it defines the look of your window. And the, the thing, one of the things that's really cool about it is that it is visual code. So if we look over here at this example, the, the, the layout um, has elements in it. And you can sort of see, um, um, so let me talk about what, what the format of this thing is. It's a list of lists where each row is a list. This last row is the only list that has two items in it, which is there are two buttons. And each list represents a row in your GUI window. And I'll go into that in just a moment. But 
but understand that what you're seeing is the window. So you can expect when we run this that there'll be a row that has text, a row that has an input field, and two buttons at the bottom. Uh, it's part of the reason why a designer isn't quite so important for PySimple GUI, because the code itself sort of becomes a designer. You can visualize, looking at the code, what your window is going to look like. And, and that's just not possible with the other GUI frameworks. They don't work like that. Having it be lists of lists also means that we can uh, build or compute layouts, which we will do later on. Um, it, it's just pure magic. That's it, the only way I can put it. Um, so it, as I mentioned, each row is an element. When I say elements, I think I've talked about this before. It's um, what other GUI frameworks call widgets. I don't call them widgets so that it doesn't get confused with a Tkinter widget. You understand immediately that you're talking about not Tkinter, but you're talking about PySimple GUI when you talk about a text element. Um, they all map to the underlying framework. Text is a, a, a label. I input uh, is, what are they called? I think it's called an entry, something like that. Um, I, I, what I call a spin is a spin box. Tkinter WX Python is called a spin button. It's QSpin and cute, and Remy calls it a spin box, but I call it just spin. Um, so, oh, here's the, here's the visual uh, representation I was talking about. So you can see this layout looks sort of like this window. And so uh, it, it makes uh, a designer not as needed, but there is a designer uh, if you need one. And here's our layout designer. The first thing you're going to want to do is uh, launch the designer. And you can use pencil or pen. Uh, I, I like pencil so that we can erase. Um, in case you haven't noticed, this designer is pencil and paper. There is a cute designer that uh, has been written. I, I didn't write it, but you can research it if you're into it. But let's go through what how to design your window. Basically, that's what this is all about. The first thing you want to do is sketch your window. And forget PySimple GUI for a moment and just talk about GUIs. You want to sketch out what your layout looks like. Determine all the things that are inputs and all the things that are outputs and how you want to lay those out for the user. Um, so whether it's PySimple GUI or Tkinter, do this for all windows. So sketch your window. We're going to put it, we already mentioned, uh, as rows. So step three, we take uh, our window and we've made three rows out of it. In fact, you see that there's three rows in this layout. So row one has uh, elements on it. Row two does too. If we label them, row one has text element. Row two has an input element. Row three has uh, a button. This example over here has two buttons. So once you figure out what your layout is on paper, you can write the code uh, and then you can add it as section two of your program. So that's how you make a layout and kind of what they're all about. The elements, this is the Tkinter list. Uh, as you can see, there are a lot of elements. Uh, I don't want to go through what they all are here. That, that's for another section or something. But they they all map to something. And the only elements under Tkinter that aren't um, represented are some of the TTK um, widgets, especially if they have a TK version. The TTK stuff is just, it's a pain to... Um, style it so it, it's better to stick with just the TK versions which is what is provided. The, a, an exception to that is buttons. There's a bug with Max where a normal TK button won't allow you to set the color to anything but I think white or else the text matches the color so it doesn't appear. So I had to write a TDK button specifically for the Mac. Um, you can use it for Windows too. It's missing a couple of features like uh, button images, um, but at least Mac users can now have um, buttons in their windows. Um, each element, as we had discussed before, has a lot of parameters. So when we pull up a text element and we look at all these parameters, there's just a, a, a lot of them. And 
some of them are common across elements and a few of those are this list here the size it's a tuple this is in characters and rows so um, with the text element it will generally auto size but let's say it's an output type of element and you want to reserve 20 characters then you would say here uh, size equals 20 comma 1 and that will uh, give you um, 20 characters in your, your text element. Uh, a key we will get into more uh, with events, but know that all elements have keys. It is like its name in a way. It's what you will use to identify that element. You could think of it as a key like in a dictionary. Um, they need to be unique. If you don't assign one, one will be assigned for you. Um, for buttons, the text on the button becomes the key. So here, this button with an OK has a key of OK. Uh, padding is how much space to leave around the element. You can specify uh, a tuple with two parameters, int, int. This is in pixels. And what this is, is the amount of pixels on the left and right and top and bottom, right? So it's, it's the padding that will be used so that things aren't all smooshed together. So let me show you what smooshed together looks like. This is a launcher that I use. This has pad of zero, zero for buttons. So there is no padding. If you were to put uh, a pad it would put something on the left and the right and something on the top and bottom i think the default is five three i'm not sure you can further break down pads uh beyond a simple um le uh, left right top bottom and make it um specific where you can say left r oops i'm sorry l left right top and bottom as tuples within tuples if that makes sense. So you can say, um, here, let's write it. Pad equals, and you could say like five, five. And that would be uh, five pixels on the left and right, five pixels above and below. Let's say you wanted 10 pixels on the left, five pixels on the right, and then five pixels above and below. That's what it would look like if you wanted five pixels on the left and 50 pixels on the right then it would look like that you can break it up so there's a lot of combinations in how you can do the padding it's discussed quite a bit in the documentation colors um, for each element there's different types of colors for a text element there's the background color that the text is on there's the text color itself um, in the documentation, there's a discussion about how to specify colors. You can use um, the name of a color, which there's a published list of what those are uh, for Ginter. There's also um, something similar for Qt. You can specify a string that has RGB values. Um, enable events is a bool. And what that does is it will generate an event if the user interacts with that element in some fashion. And that will change on a per element basis. For text, if you enable the event, it means if someone clicks that text, then it will generate an event. If it's an input text element, then when someone types a character, it will get an event. Buttons automatically have events enabled, which it's when someone clicks a button. Uh, sliders when you can enable events so that when someone moves the slider then you will get an event um, visibility uh, determines whether or not it will show up in your layout so l let me run this just so we see what kind of what's going on with this and, and notice the layout here uh, in particular there's a bunch of space below my layout and that's because we said on the top put five on the bottom put 50 so check that out um, uh, let's see, what was I going through? The visibility. So if we uh, want to um, exit out of this at the end, sorry. If we don't want the input to show up, I can say visible is false. 
when I run this, you will see that there now is no longer an input element. You can make it visible later. Um, the problem with Tkinter is that it will move the element when you make it visible again to the bottom of whatever kind of container it was in. So if for a window, it will move it to the bottom of the window. A trick to fix that is to put the thing that you're making invisible into a column so that when you make it visible again and it goes back into the column, it will be the only thing that was in the column, so it will return to its normal spot in a way. This is discussed at length, um, I think, in the documentation, maybe the cookbook. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, another place that visibility is used for, Im for inputs in particular is um, for having button targets. There are some buttons that fill in information in your window. You can make the input invisible so that it's filled in. It's part of the window, but the user doesn't see it. Um, I'll, I'll show you how to do that a little bit later. You can m make them visible again by calling the update method, which we will talk about later. Um, all right, so that's it for visibility. Tool tips, each of the uh, elements, you can have tool tips. So here, tool tip is input stuff here. So when I run this and you hover over that, you will see a, a nice little tool tip. Um, you can uh, set it for the, I think for the window as well, there's like a tool tip, maybe not. No, there's not for the window level. Sorry. Uh, I'm thinking right, cl uh, right click menu. So uh, also there's metadata as a parameter and you can access that metadata later um, by looking up the element and accessing dot metadata so here i can say metadata is one two three if i look up that element and i examine the metadata member variable it will have that value so it's a way for you to carry around information about an element in the element itself rather than you carrying it around in a variable of some sort right click menus are part of tkinter we will talk about that later um, they are also available in uh, at the window level which will m make it um, work across the entire window and th there's several things like that where if you set it at the window level it uses it for all things let's talk about fonts that i think i skipped that so if we said font which comes in two formats uh, let's say it's courier 14 and i did it at the window level here so all of the fonts are now courier if i change that so that only this text element up here uses it i knew better than to do that then uh, only that element will have the uh, the font change so window level things uh, supersede uh, all the, the or, or set a default for, for all the elements in the window. If you've set something in the window and then you set something on the element, the element will override whatever default the window has set up. I Ho hope that made sense. Um, we talked earlier about your IDE and how it is your superpower. Uh, use Control P to quickly get a list of all of the different options um, and Control Q as well to get the doc string information. Uh, it works not just for PySimple GUI, but it works for all of Python. So use your IDE's superpower. Uh, if you don't have uh, an IDE and you're looking for information about these calls, then you will find at the bottom of the documentation, the online documentation at PySimpleGUI.org, all of the call signatures. So it has not only the parameters for creating the element, but it has a list of all of the methods that are available for the element, as well as um, the parameters.
In fact, let's go take a look at that documentation just because it is so awesome. And you are such a good developer that I know that you're going to use this documentation, especially before you submit an issue. If you go down at the bottom using this handy table of contents, you'll see the element and function call reference. This has all of the functions that you can call uh, and it's got the elements. So if I wanted to look up button and what it does, it has all the parameters it has uh, it has them described in excruciating detail and also has all of the methods that you can call I mentioned pep8 bindings so here's uh, an example of pep8 bindings at work this get text is uh, a method pep8 says methods are supposed to be lowercase and look like this so you will find that there is a pep8 version the original 1.0 version of PySimple GUI was not pep8 compliant with those function calls and so um, at one point along the way a, a complete rebinding of all of the methods happened so that there is lowercase versions and they're all pep8 compliant now as a result so if you have questions and you don't see it in, um, in in your ide or you're not using an ide then come here to pysimplegood.org and you will get all of your questions answered Okay, let's keep moving on. Window creation, step three. So we talked about five sections. We're through the first two. <laughs> We're at the window creation. So um, th w w one thing that you'll notice is that I don't specify every single named parameter. The first parameter of window is the title. The second one is the layout. You don't need to say layout equals. I promise that I am not going to change the order of those uh, parameters. Okay, so for important methods like this, I'm going to leave them like like they are so that it's very simple you, you shouldn't have to specify every parameter and it's it's rare that i would change the order of something so here's where you create your window is um, by creating a window object just like um, elements there are tons of options uh way too many to discuss here just understand that uh here's the list in fact uh, so, some parameters configure elements. We talked about that before, like font. Now let's get into reading windows and what that means. It, it's uh, covered down with the event loop, but uh, I wanted to pull it out separate. Th this is another critical difference between PySimple GUI and the other frameworks. When you call window.read, you're given back two values. You're given the event that caused the read to return, and you're given a values dictionary. If, if your window doesn't have any keys, then it'll be a list, but put, put keys in your windows. It, all of that's explained. The list stuff is explained in the documentation if you want to know about that, but assume that it's a dictionary. So you call window read, you get an event like uh, OK, the guy pressed an OK button. The values contains, a it's a dictionary with all of the values of the window. So in this case, there's, there's one input uh, field and it uh, will be part of this values dictionary that comes back. So you read it and instead of going out and asking each widget like you would to enter what the value is, you're already provided with all values for the window. So um, in, in this example, we have a, a key that's input and guess what if I say print values sub with our key input then it's going to um, print that whatever we have input so let's run this and if I say test here prints test uh, most of my test programs by the way you will notice that after the read there's a print event values um, 
just always add that to your code for a while um, because you, it will give you a snapshot of what's going on. If I say test and I click OK, what's printed is the event, which in this case is the OK button that was pressed. And then you see a dictionary and it's got the key, which is our elements key. And it's got the value, which in this case was test and it's just a great way to debug you know if i was to add another one of these and and say input one and let's run that and what's what's going to happen i have one two three four five six i do okay now my dictionary has two keys and it gives me the values for them i don't have to go query anything to get the values it's all in one big dictionary um this is the way GUIs were meant to work. No, just my opinion, sorry. An another thing you will see in pretty much every PySimple GUI program is shortly after the read, like right afterwards, there's uh, a check to see if event is none, or in this case, cancel. So sometimes you'll see if event um, is none, if like if there is no cancel button, then it would be a break. Uh, and none is what is returned if someone clicks the X button. So if I do this, then what you'll see printed is none as the event, and that will kick us out of our event loop. It's important to always check for none and some other values if there's a, a cancel or an, or an exit button get, give your users a way out of your program if you don't then it's possible for them to close the window with the x and your code continues to run in the background chewing up cpu time when um it shouldn't be you know you, you're supposed to exit when someone closes a window so always put a check for none or, or and or uh an exit or cancel or whatever button that you're using there so let's take a look here we talked about how this is the, the thing that really differentiates things. Uh, reads block uh, until events happen. So you call read, it sits there, it waits. There are asynchronous versions that don't do that. We'll talk about that later. We um, talked about the values dictionary, uh, keys, all of that stuff. Uh, I don't think there's anything else on this. Oh, the window is shown to the user uh the first time that it's read and um there's there's an exception to that it, and that is if you finalize a window and I'll, I'll talk about that in a little bit that's another time that the window is is um, created so just understand that calling window or creating your window doesn't actually put it on the screen it uh, sets things up so that whenever uh, you do call read then uh, a, a, an actual tkinter window is built and shown one mistake that, that early programmers do just because they're in the habit of doing it is calling get methods um, so here it, you would call like a get method for this input whatever don't, don't do that because the values dictionary you're, you're given what those values are already you don't need to call get in order to get those values Okay, one shot is uh, one of the two design patterns. These uh, types of windows do not have event loops they, because as you can see here in this event loop, you keep doing it until uh, something breaks you out of it, like the none or a cancel. And the cool thing about one shot windows is that they can be done in one line of code. Um, they're really cool. You'll see the, the GUI front end we did in a previous lesson uh, is it was a one shot window. It, it's grabbed the parameters like a folder uh, and then close the window and move on. Um, so let's take a look at a one shot here. This is a, a, a one-shot window that gets uh, your name and your favorite color. 
point and at the end it does a pop-up and shows the event and values dictionary so i click the ok button that was the event the values dictionary has two items they both happen to be uh, things that i entered and input and the combo so you see the, the key color and the value green from where i chose it out of the combo box so let's show you the the uh, the one line version of this thing. Uh, you'll you'll notice here um, that it, it it's already been partially compressed. I the way I approach compressing a PySimple GUI program. Uh, hang on, let me let me make this not compressed. Okay, presto, look at that. I am fast. Uh, this is a typical window now, just like you saw before. Um, we have our layout, we create a window, we read the window, we close the window, right? So with uh, a one shot, you can, you, you don't really need the window because you're, you're only going to interact with it once. And you can chain calls with Python. So you can say window read, that will create the window and then call the read. So now we, we can say event values equals that, right? Right. But we have a problem uh, where the window is still open. There's a parameter on read where if you set it to true, it will close the window uh, after the read is complete. Now, uh, this layout we can copy. Um, actually, let's, let's make it one line. Uh, Control Shift J uh, with PyCharm combines lines so that you can the you time know, is make one o'clock. You can make lines, uh, a single line like this. So we're going to take our layout. We're going to paste it in there like that. Now, uh, line 19 is a single line of code. And when I run this program, it does the same sort of thing. I say it's me and my color is purple and I hit OK. Notice there's there's only one one window open and it's uh, the pop up. It still shows me that OK is what I pressed and what the values were. So uh, th these one shots can be very powerful to add to your code. So in because in a single line of code now, you can ask the user for some information, get it, and move on with your with your code. You, you don't have to do a, a bunch of special tkinter code. You know, you're replacing 20 or 30 lines of tkinter code with one line of PySimple GUI that you can drop in anywhere, and uh, it just works. One other thing I want to show before we close this out, um, you, you see down here the single line solution. It was a note that I had to do. Um, a, a, a lot of times people, when they see a simple window like this one, they expect to be able to hit the return key. So I type some stuff in, I choose uh, my color, uh, and I want to hit return, right? That's just how you expect a GUI to operate. Well, y you can make that happen with PySimple GUI by adding a parameter here to the OK button that says bind the return key. And what that does is it makes it so that the return key will tr uh, trigger uh, that OK button. So I just click or hit return and it acted like the OK button uh, was pressed. So let's do that again. If I just hit return, then uh, it returned that OK was pressed, then the name is empty and the color is empty. But so bind return key, very handy for these little windows as well. And that, that could have been combined to be a single line solution with that included. And I think that's it for this lesson. Thank you for your patience and working through it. But now you've got an education of how to build a complete PySimple GUI uh, window and program. So the, the rest is up to you to fill it out with elements and uh, have fun. Thank you for watching and I hope to see your creations soon.